The Ford Bronco reveal is just weeks away now, and I've got some information on the possible reveal date, and I've also got some exclusive information on the hardtop and also the engine that I don't think has been reported anywhere else. So stay tuned for the rest of the video. So first up, we know that there is going to be a removable hardtop. We've seen this reported in the media. And in fact, there have been some spy photos of Broncos driving around without all the extra cladding that was on top of the previous one. So, so we know it's removable, but my source, and this is a source within Ford, tells me that it's going to be removable in sections so that there's gonna be a separate driver removable section and a separate passenger removable section, kind of like the uh, the T-top from the 1970s Firebirds, if you can remember cars like that, or the Supra. The whole idea is to make it easy for a single person to remove the tops and not have to carry up this big top, which you have to do like on the Jeep and some other vehicles. Also for the rear section of the roof, that's also gonna be removable and apparently also in sections as well. Also my source tells me that there is gonna be a removable soft top as well, pretty much like the Jeep. So to me, that's pretty great news. Like for example, if you live in a winter climate or somewhere with bad weather all the time and you wanna be able to drive it in the winter, but you also wanna be able to drive it in the summer and you don't want the soft top, this is great news because you don't have to have this huge thing that you take off, this whole top that you take off and store it somewhere in your garage or if you got a condo, it's really super inconvenient. So if these pieces come off and they're sort of individual sections like toast, this should be a lot easier to store it. So that is pretty cool. So the second item has to do with the startup screen. I know you've seen this before, it's been reported before, but there was an Instagram user who messaged me uh, two days ago, his name is Nicholas Schmidt. He is from Germany. Thank you so much, Nicholas. I really appreciate you finding this. I'm gonna link to his Instagram page right here. So there's a tool called Forescan, which works on Fords. It's a way that you can code your car and change some minor features things like that. So he was messing around with his Focus RS, great car by the way. He found that there is a splash screen in there called Bronco. It's up on screen right now. So we've seen this before, but it's kind of worth mentioning again. It's kind of cool to see the rocks and this whole thing forming a Bronco. But what also is very interesting is that the Bronco is gonna be getting Ford Sync 4, 4.0. Right now we're on Ford Sync 3. Three, I think it's up to 3.4 is the beta, 3.2 is the main one. So it's gonna, the Ford Sync 4 is going to be, it's gonna have its debut on the Mustang Mach-E and also the Ford Bronco. That's pretty cool. So Ford has it, uh, a little teaser on their page. And we know that it is able to support screen sizes from eight inches all the way up to 15.5 inches, which is the big mambo jama that we're gonna get in the Mustang Mach-E. I don't think it's gonna be that big on the Bronco. Uh, what we do know is gonna have uh, voice recognition, probably improved voice recognition, some sort of cloud connectivity, which is great. And here's something that they're stealing right uh, from Tesla is over the air updates. That is huge. You don't need to go to the dealer to update things. I'm assuming that's for the whole car as opposed to just the uh, the Ford Sync 4, but I'm not entirely sure on that. Correct me, let me know if it's gonna be like updates for the whole entire vehicle or just for the, uh, the Ford Sync system. So someone over at TFL Now found an image or took an image of the interior of the Bronco with the screen and it looks to be, you know, it looks to be pretty big. I'm guessing about 12 inches. So I think that's what they're expecting is that the screen is gonna be at least 12 inches or more. And hey, everybody wants 12 inches, right? Sorry, another really bad joke, but hey, bigger is better, right? Next, we're gonna talk about the engine. And by the way, if you have information, go ahead and message me on Instagram. It's the best place to reach me. If you leave a comment on YouTube, it's kind of hard for me to see it because sometimes there's a lot of comments on a video. So this is also, as far as I know, has not been reported anywhere else. This is from my source within Ford. There's been a lot of speculation about the various engines. So we know that we're gonna get a 2.3 liter EcoBoost. That's almost certainly, I would say that's confirmed. We're gonna get a 2.7 liter EcoBoost as well. And so there's been a lot of talk about the 3.5 liter engine that currently is in the Ford F-150 and some other vehicles. So this engine has various horsepower levels anywhere from about 375 all the way up to 450 in the Raptor and a lot of torque. 
So the internal source says that the 3.5 liter, which has been discussed all over the place, does not fit into the chassis. Remember, this chassis is going to be the upcoming Ranger chassis. So apparently it does not fit, it is too big. So people are kind of bummed about that because everybody's been talking about they want the, the V8 in there. They wanna see the Coyote V8, the, the five liter V8 that everybody wants. But I don't think we're gonna see that. But I think what we are going to see, and this is from the source, that we're gonna see a three liter engine in an upcoming Raptor version. So this engine is in a couple of vehicles right now. It's currently in the 2020 Ford Explorer. It's also in the 2020 Ford Aviator. And there it makes 400 horsepower and 415 pounds-feet of torque. That's not too bad. And here's something else that's really cool. In the Aviator Hybrid version, we're looking at 494 horsepower and 630 pound-feet of torque. That is mega. Now we don't know, I don't really have any confirmation or any solid information about a future uh, hybrid version of the Bronco. Uh, I think we're almost certainly gonna get one in the Bronco Sport because that is based on the Ford Escape and the Ford Escape already has a hybrid uh, engine in there. So I think in the Escape, it's, a, it's pretty likely we're gonna see a hybrid. I don't know so much about the, the Bronco right now, but that is a lot of torque. When you look at the competition, you look at Jeep, for example, they have the Eco Diesel, which makes 442 pounds feet of torque. That's pretty mega. Actually, I'm gonna be reviewing one next week uh, and I'm gonna take it off road. So I'm gonna let you know how that torque feels. It's supposed to get better gas mileage too. So that's what we're supposed to get in the Raptor. So this is the dual overhead cam engine. It's been around since 2016. It has a cast aluminum block and it is based on the 2.7 liter Nano, the twin turbo. And how they got the displacement increased is through a bigger bore and a longer stroke. And by the way, all these specs that I'm quoting are coming from Ford Authority. So we don't know what it's gonna actually, what the output is going to be in a future Bronco Raptor. We don't really know when the Bronco Raptor is gonna be available, but I have, from the people that I've spoken with, it's gonna be at least a year behind the the launch of the uh, the main Bronco. So I think we're looking at an additional year for the Raptor. Again, things could change, but remember we're in this environment right now where production has been put off by roughly two months on everything. So just sort of take that into consideration. And by the way, the Bronco, the bigger Bronco, the mid-sized Bronco is going to be built in the US in Michigan. And the Bronco Sport is gonna be built in Hermosillo, Mexico. Now, since this is an overview video and it's gonna talk about the other two engines that everybody has heard about before, you can skip over this part if you want. There's almost certainly gonna be a 2.3 liter EcoBoost engine, four cylinder, single turbo. It is, uh, in the Mustang, it makes 310 horsepower and 350 pound-feet of torque. In the Focus RS, it makes 350 horsepower and 350 pound-feet of torque. So that is as high as Ford is pushing it right now. I think I would expect it to be probably in the 270 to 300 horsepower range uh, for the Bronco. There's also the 2.7 liter that I just mentioned. This is the EcoBoost. It is currently in the Ford F-150. It makes 325 horsepower, 375 pound-feet of torque. Not, not too bad on the torque side, and torque is really what matters when you're going off-road. Remember, that's really important. This is also in the Ford Nautilus, where it makes up to 335 horsepower and 380 pound-feet of torque. So you can actually get a fair bit of power out of this engine. So it'll be interesting to see how Ford positions these three different engines, the 2.3, the 2.7, and the 3.0, and how much power they're gonna be making. I don't know how far they're gonna push it in an off-road environment where you're, you have the ability to sort of abuse the engine or rev it a lot more. That would tend to make me think that they're gonna have the power and torque a little bit decreased for reliability but that's just pure specula speculation on my side. We're gonna have to find out, but we're gonna find out pretty soon. And I've got what I think is a pretty solid reveal date. I'm gonna talk about that in just a minute. So when you got the power, you've gotta get it down to the wheels somehow. So there are going to be two transmissions. So the one that I think is gonna be 
The most popular one, of course, is the 10-speed automatic. This is the Ford 10R80. It is currently used in a lot of vehicles. It is in the Ranger, it's in the Mustang, it's in the Ford Expedition, and it can handle a lot of torque. And if you haven't driven this transmission, I can tell you it's, it's pretty good at least in terms of the way it uh, delivers power. I've used it in the five liter Mustang and they have a, a drag mode. I don't know exactly what it's called, but man, that transmission shifts fast. It is really impressive. It's highly configurable. So I think it's a great transmission. I don't know about reliability. If you have comments about reliability, let me know, but I think it's a really good transmission and they're using it a lot. Just as you didn't know, this transmission was actually jointly developed with General Motors and Ford and GM each have their own unique versions of this. Ford has this 10 speed version and GM has a nine speed version. I think you can pretty much count on this transmission for sure being available at the outset of the start. Now here's another cool thing. There is a seven speed transmission from Ford Getrog. This is a German arm. It's a joint uh, operation between Ford and Getrog. It's a seven speed manual transmission. And this is a very, very clever manual. It's very cool, actually. It is very lightweight and it's modular, which means you can adapt it for different configurations, including four wheel drive. Here's the cool thing, seven speed manual. It's not gonna be like the, like the Corvette, for example, which just has seven sort of normal speeds in an overdrive. The seventh speed, which could be the first speed, I'm not quite sure how they're gonna configure it. Probably on the seventh speed is my guess way over up to the right. It's gonna have a low speed crawl gear. It's got a very wide gear spread ratio. For comparison, the Jeep Wrangler has a six speed manual and it has a spread of 7.1, a gear spread of 7.1. This transmission, the seven speed from Ford Getrog has a spread of 11. So the super low gear, here's one thing that they could do with it. And again, this is just speculation on my part they might be able to save some weight by not having a low speed transfer case by just having this extra speed and save some weight. Again, pure speculation on my part. Here's another very cool, two more cool things about this transmission. It can work with a hybrid. Uh, there's a Ford video up uh, from Ford Getrog where they're showing it as an application with a hybrid and it can park itself. So the fact that it can park itself tells me that it is an automated manual to some degree. Doesn't sound like a DCT, sounds like a manual, but some sort of automated manual. There's the information on it is a little bit scant. I've got a slide up on screen. You're probably looking at that right now. And from the video, they don't explain exactly what it is, but the fact that it can park itself, that's pretty neat. It's likely gonna have front and rear locking diffs although I haven't been able to get confirmation either way on that, that seems pretty likely. Again, that is taking a page out of Jeep's book. I don't know that this transmission is gonna be, be available at launch. It is possible they will delay it. I don't know what their production sort of cycle looks like, uh, but some people are saying, the source that I have spoken to says, this transmission is confirmed. That's pretty cool. We don't know what the engine combination that is gonna be made it to yet. So let me know in the comments, which transmission would you choose? Would you go for the manual or would you go for the automatic? So here's my preference. I actually like automatics off-road for a couple of different reasons. One is it's kind of impossible to burn out your clutch if you're in a uh, difficult environment, you're doing some rock crawling, you're trying to get through a particularly difficult section that's wet and slippery and you can burn out your clutch and you can overheat your clutch. So that's one thing. The second thing is with an automatic, you are able to, the manufacturers are able to program a whole bunch of different cool modes. Like for example, in the Toyota 4Runner, there's something called crawl mode. And you can only do that with an automatic where you can send power to the wheel that needs it. So personally, I'm down with automatics now, even though I'm a kind of a save the manuals kind of guy. There should be a link to my Toyota 4Runner TRD Pro review up here as soon as it's done. So the tires that are gonna be available, we're looking on the base Bronco, probably some 255 width tires with 285 as an option, just like the, the Rubicon version of the Jeeps. And in the Raptor version, we're looking at 315, 34 inch 17s with a bead lock option. Again, you can go crazy in the comments, 
beadlock is gonna be available as an option that you have to go to the aftermarket or Ford Performance to get the beadlock ring. They can't sell it to you as something you can just drive off the dealer lot because beadlocks are illegal. You gotta put them on when you get off-road. Now the suspension. The suspension, this is probably one of the most controversial parts about the Bronco, but let's talk about it for a second. Yes, independent front suspension, solid rear axle. I see comments constantly. People are commenting all over the place in forums that, that Ford is going to fail if it doesn't have a solid front and solid rear. They're gonna fail. Everything is gonna go down in flames. Yeah, I'm sure that's what Ford wants. I'm sure that's exactly their intention. They want to fail. So here is my advice. If you think Ford is going to fail because you need a solid front axle, you should get a Jeep. That's my advice. So here's something that's much more realistic though. The Toyota 4Runner has independent suspension all the way around and it is insanely capable off-road. I had one recently. It is so capable off-road, it's, it's fantastic. It's only gonna be in the most extreme rock crawling conditions that an independent front suspension is not gonna sort of do what you need it to do. The Land Rover, legendary off-road, legendary. So here's something that's very interesting about the Ford Bronco that we are, I think we're gonna see. So it's a good possibility, a little speculation. There is a patent filing on active suspension. So this patent talks about control signals that correspond to a current driving dynamic of a suspension system. And a vehicle state is computed and a non-traditional suspension mode is selected. You can see there are ac there's accutators and you can see that there are lines going to each individual wheel. So it seems very possible or very likely that there's gonna be some type of, I'm guessing again here, some sort of rock crawler mode or some difficult terrain type mode where, where the wheel actually lifts up actively to help clear an obstacle. This is pretty cool. And this is, I think it's sort of a game changer because Jeep doesn't have this and Ford is definitely competing very directly with Jeep at the price point. The only other place to get this right now is you've gotta to go to the Land Rover Defender, which has air suspension, and that has a starting price of $50,000, and it goes up from there. They have one with an, another level of suspension that goes up, that's $68,000, and they have one at $80,000. So we're talking about very different vehicles. Finally, let's talk about the reveal date. I think I've got it pretty dialed in now. So this is from a source at Ford. They say that the reveal will be after the Michigan shelter in place is lifted. Currently, the Michigan shelter in place ends June 12th. And Ford has previously said that the reveal is gonna be this spring. So the summer solstice is June 20th. So taking the those two dates, I think the reveal is gonna be between June 13th and the 19th. And it's not gonna be a weekend that's very odd for reveals to be in the weekend. So my guess, it's gonna be the week of June 15th. I think it's gonna be either the 16th, 17th, or 18th. The midweek reveals tend to be not on, sometimes they're on Mondays, but they tend not to be on Fridays. So my best guess is 16, 17, 18. I, considering the whole COVID thing right now, I feel pretty strongly it's gonna be close to the home base in Michigan. There's another Bronco video up on screen and my Forerunner review is up here too. Subscribe if you want more information about the Bronco and I will see you in the next video.